The oldest depictions found of the human body begin to appear around 100,000 BCE. Possibly the most iconic and oldest prehistoric depiction of the human figure is the Venus of Willendorf, a bulbous, palm-sized figurine. There is a hypothesis by McCoy and McDermott that they were actually soft portraits by women, as there is a correlation between the proportions of the statues and the proportions of a woman's body if seen looking down at oneself, one of the only ways they would have been able to view their body at the time. Fast forward a couple hundred years, and it becomes abundantly clear that artists would utilise models for their figures, maybe even dead bodies. During classical antiquity, artists depicted what was believed to be the idealised human form, grounded in a canon of proportions and the golden ratio. Although ideal proportions were paramount, artists craved greater realism in their anatomical depictions to enhance the emotional and psychological realism and build tension. Herophilus and Erasistratus pioneered the advancement of science and medicine, claiming that the dissection of cadavers was an integral part of this improvement. Despite this, there were significant moral and religious objections. With the establishment of Alexandria, one of the largest cities of the ancient world, the desire for scientific education overwhelmed these objections. So, for a time, scientific study thrived, and the support for dissections increased steadily. In 3 BCE, the Greek school of medicine made the dissection of human bodies its main method of learning anatomy. Unfortunately, after the death of Herophilus and Erasistratus, their accomplishments dissipated, and by 389 CE, the practice had completely disappeared, coinciding with the introduction of Christianity to the Roman Empire. For hundreds of years, scientists were forced to rely on animal dissections, predominantly that of pigs, for their knowledge of anatomy. As you can imagine, this led to incorrect teachings of human anatomy. By the medieval period, human dissection was completely outlawed by the Christian church, deeming it an act of mutilation due to the belief that the body was a temporary vessel for the soul and was also heavily associated with shame and sin. It was believed this meant that there was no need for close examination. Still, there were resistors. Holy Roman Emperor Frederick II decreed that a human body must be dissected every five years to ensure the progression of scientific and artistic achievement. This small act did a lot for the field, and other European countries began to acknowledge the importance. By the end of the 13th century, the Catholic Church was still vehemently opposed to human autopsies and forbade the act once more. Now, the Renaissance. This period was marked by a rebirth of ideas and achievements from the classical age. This rebirth of scientific knowledge revived the respect for anatomical studies, which began to be taught all around Europe. And the first legal dissection of the Renaissance period was in the 14th century. This is where the artists come back in. At first, it may seem random, but it is actually quite genius. Autopsies and art became very closely linked. While some artists chose to exclusively use lab models as they had throughout history, many others pursued anatomical lessons. These artists desired to produce the most lifelike depictions of the human form that they could, and dissection of the human body allowed for extremely high levels of accuracy. From here, a mutually beneficial relationship between anatomists and artists emerged. Artists wanted to understand the human form better, so they would observe autopsies and dissection demonstrations. In return, the artists would provide the anatomists with drawings to add into their papers and books. This relationship was bolstered by the invention of the printing press in the 1430s, which allowed anatomists to publish more frequently, therefore the demand for detailed drawings of human anatomy increased. Some, such as Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo, actually carried out their own studies. Da Vinci is said to have completed 20 dissections just between 1510 and 1511. These artists became known for their expert knowledge of anatomy, and it was clearly reflected in their art. At the height of the Renaissance, religious perspectives had shifted significantly. According to the Catholic Church, these drawings were now evidence that God created man as they exposed how complex the human body really is. As stated previously, a great example for the use of anatomy in art is Leonardo da Vinci, who carried out his own dissections on animals and human corpses. Through this, he produced drawings and sketches that he utilised for other purposes as well as for the pursuit of knowledge. He warned fellow artists, however, of the fear of living through the night hours in the company of quartered and flayed out corpses fearful to behold. 
It could be said that to be an artist during the Renaissance was to become an anatomist. A deeper understanding of the human body and how it is structured revolutionised the art world, forever changing the course of art history.